Hello, I'm Eskimo, and I'm here to talk about CorelDRAW. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate ways that you could use my match vectors macro and also possibly my circle on curves macro in conjunction with it to place copies of this shape around this shape here in a particular way. So they'd be aligned with and offset from that curve in a particular way. Um, going to start here by using manual placement of all the positions where I'm going to put these. I'm choosing the two-point line and this is currently set to use a perpendicular constraint here so that as we draw these they stay perpendicular to that curve. So every place I want to place one of these, these uh, uh, copies of the shape I'm going to draw this and I'm going to go over and click on Tag Selection under the Target Vectors section of the Match Vectors macro. In this case, this checkbox is checked to allow tagging of multiple target vectors because we're going to put multiple target vectors down around this and then use a single source vector and use those to shoot the copies to the right locations. So every place I want one and put this and tag it, you see the counts going up, it's not clearing the other tag as we go. So I've drawn six of these. They've all been tagged as being target vectors. And they're not all the same length because I didn't pay any particular attention to making them the same length. If we go here to the vector tuner section of this macro and you click on any one of these, you can see the length and the angle. And see, of course, they have different angles because they were all tangent to the curve, but they all have arbitrary lengths. So I'm going to use Find here to select all of those. You can see down here we have six objects selected. And these are blank now because it'll only show a value there if everything in the selection has the same value. Uh, these aren't all the same length and they aren't all the same angle. But if I set these to 0.75 inches and apply, they've kept their angles, but they are all have individually been set to 0.75 inches. So that's ready to go as the target vectors. Now we need a source vector to use as a reference for how this part's going to be copied to these locations. I'm going to just use the freehand tool, start at the midpoint, draw a line, and this, since it is a two node uh, line segment, is also shown here in the vector tuner section. I want to set this also to be 0.75. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want the length of this and the length of the uh, target vectors to all be the same because I don't want to scale this. I only want to reposition these when I duplicate them. And while I have this selected, I'll also define this as the source vector. So we have a source vector and we have target vectors. Now, if we do this, it will use the source vector position and the uh, target vector positions to locate these. So if I picked this and said match vectors, okay, it put them all right on the edge at that point. If you look at any of these, you can see that kind of a positioning there. So it's very, uh, uh, very consistent the way it positions them. That's, that's not really what we want. We want these offset from the edge in some, in some way. So in this case, I'm going to move this relative to this. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use my mover macro. It's set to move vertically by 0.15 inches. Apply that. And now that should it use the same 0.15 inch offset when it places this in all these locations. And we see that is the case. So if you were making a, a, a piece of leather or something and punching out holes for straps or stitching or uh, some connector like that, uh, this is one way you might be able to do it. And I did this by creating all of these tangent lines, making them all the same length using one of the features here in Match Vectors, tagging them all as target vectors, setting up my uh, source vector, 
and the shape I wanted to use and uh, shot them all over there in that way. Now, another way we could do this that might be useful, especially if you had uh, wanted to make a, a larger number of holes in something and you didn't have, you didn't really require specific manual placement of them, would be to use my circle on curves macro, which can create circles spaced along uh, the subpaths of a selected curve. So in this case, if I select this curve, I already have this set up to have a uh, the circle diameter, a spacing of one inch. Down here in the just circles section of this macro, I have a checkbox check to create target vectors. So this macro is aware of match vectors and it can help match vectors out by creating target vectors when it creates the circle. So even though this macro is made for making circles, we're, we kind of hijacked it to make it do something else. And we'll just easier to show you than to talk about it is to just create circles and it created all those circles. And uh, the circles are grouped by default. And now that I've deleted those, you can see that it created a bunch of two node lines here that are all pointing in the direction of the curve where they originate. In fact, those are also grouped. And it's done one more thing. It not only created them, but it has already tagged those as target vectors. So it's already set up a bunch of target vectors for us, for match vectors. And I haven't changed the source vector and I haven't changed the position of this. So we can show you what would happen if we did that. Well, oh, well, we had a couple things going on there. One of them is it made them smaller and you see the orientation is not the orientation we really want. We want them oriented 90 degrees uh, away. Now the reason they came up smaller is because the size of these is 0.375. They're 3 eighths of an inch. And the size of this is uh, 3 quarters of an inch. So they're being scaled down by a factor of two. Now, we can't tune the length of them here with uh, the vector tuner, but we have another panel here called VT relative. So it's vector tuner, but relative rather than absolute. So in this one, we can change it by a relative angle. Now this is 90 degrees. If I hit that, now you see we've shot everything out uh, 90 degrees pointing outwards. Uh, I could have used 90 negative 90 degrees to make them point inward, but I could also just click again and click again. And now they're all tangent and pointing inward. And if we went back to our Vector tuner again, remember we wanted these to be 0.75 inches. We can change this to 0.75 here. Since the angle is blank, it's not gonna change any of the angles. And these are all now 0.75 inches. So this is all set up for this. Click this, shoot them over, and they're all positioned. Now, if you didn't like that, it says, uh, gee, I wish I'd made those a little bit closer to the uh, to the edge, well, you can undo and go here and say, nudge it down a little bit and uh, do it over again. So this, uh, this gives you a significant amount of pay once to set up the uh, vectors and then use them again and again and again. Now, if you, if you didn't want to, you could say, find these here and then uh, delete all of those objects and get rid of them. But another thing you could do would be to take, if you're gonna use this as a pattern for future work and you thought you might wanna change uh, these in the future for some other, other job, you could select these, move them to another layer, and then set that layer to not be visible. And if you make a layer not visible, then match vectors will completely ignore them. So you can keep something in your design, have it available to use as a tool, uh, but then uh, have it out of your way when you don't want it in your way. So that's a, it's a good way to manage uh, using uh, match vectors as a tool for some sort of a template and uh, not having to go redo the work again and again if you want to go back in the future and change something. Uh, if you can't see them, it can't see them, and uh, uh, they're not a problem. And that's all I have to show here.